Everyone does it. You start a new workout routine and for about a week and a half, you're doing really great until what happens? You lose motivation. By the end of this video, I'll tell you how being selective about who I follow on Instagram really changed my whole perspective and helped me have a lot more motivation. Number one, what is the best way to motivate yourself? I think it's really important to note that you will not always be motivated and you will have times in your life where you'll lose that motivation and you'll wanna quit. And that's when you have to rely on your daily habits that you've set up for yourself and your self-discipline. That's what's going to pull you through when you lose motivation. You have to expect that you're going to lose motivation and have a plan for when that happens. Number two is connecting to your deeper why. I personally motivate myself to work out by connecting to my deeper why. I have to have a clear vision as to why I'm working so hard. What is going to get me out of bed when I'm exhausted? Like what's gonna help me push harder in the gym when I wanna quit? What will help me choose to fuel my body with nutrients instead of cave into my cravings? For me, that's always my deeper why. It's really who I want to become. I want to be the healthiest, happiest version of myself so that I can thrive. And I wanna have more energy to hit my business goals and play with my children. I know that I'm a better mom and I'm in a better mood and I have more confidence. I'm able to relieve stress and get all my anxious energy out. And so I've written down everything of why it benefits me to live a healthy lifestyle and take care of myself. And then I motivate myself by connecting with that deeper why and reminding myself every single day. So I want you to think of what your why could be and what's really going to move the needle for you. Like what's gonna motivate you when it gets really, really hard and you just do not wanna get out of bed. Number three, make it easy for yourself. I work out at the same time every day. It's like clockwork and you have to treat your workouts as if you're making an appointment with yourself that you cannot break. And if you put it in your calendar and you really plan the week before, then you're gonna be way more consistent because it has to fit into your daily routine so that it's easy to keep doing day in and day out. So for me, it has to be the same time every day before my kids wake up. I lay my clothes out the night before. It's just this non-negotiable because it's the first thing that I do that day. Next is have a plan. If you wing it, you will most likely fail. So you have to have a plan or you'll get bored, whether that is a meal plan or having a set macros or if it's having a workout program that you're following, you need to have a goal that you're working towards or a coach that's helping to hold you accountable. So if you know what you need to do each day, it really helps your motivation because it's one less thing to think about. When you show up at the gym, you know exactly what you're doing, you know exactly what workouts, and then also if you know the why behind those workouts and you know, okay, this is really going to help me get to the next level, you're gonna be a lot more motivated to stick to it instead of just walking into the gym, going straight for the treadmill or looking around and being like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll go in the corner and do some free weights. Like that's not gonna get you where you wanna go. So make sure that you have a set plan. So I have a couple tips that I help my clients really stay motivated. And the first one is getting rid of the all or nothing mentality. So first I make sure that they understand that something is better than nothing. With clients, I have seen way too often that the all or nothing mentality is really what sets them up for failure because they feel like if they're not perfect, then they're gonna quit. Or if they try to change too many things at one time, then they'll quit. So it's the small habits every day that add up. And one of the strategies that I teach is to focus on one thing at a time that you know that you can accomplish and it has to be a habit that you can be consistent at. So once you've established that you can be consistent at that habit, then you're going to add another one, and then you add another one until you're consistent with that habit. And this is called habit layering, and it's super effective to help you really change your motivation and your daily habits. So remember, you do not have to change everything all at one time. The second thing you really need to stay motivated is accountability. and. This is where you can either tell a friend 
or tell an accountability buddy. But for me, I think the best thing is to have a certified coach that is on your team, helping you and knowing exactly what to do for your body and giving you guidance because they're educated. They know how to help you and they know what's going on in your body. So I help clients be accountable to their goals with their check-ins and making sure that they're you know, logging into the app and all of that. When you know someone's watching you, that makes a huge difference. As far as the accountability as well, what I like to do is really focus on their daily mental wins and focus on everything that they're doing right. So the more engaged and positive that they feel, the more motivated they'll feel. We focus on everything that's going right and we'll still talk about things that you can improve on, but the positive experience is very, very important because if this journey is an uplifting experience, then you'll wanna continue, right? So I want you to think about who are you talking to? Like who's holding you accountable to your goals? Who have you told, tell people your goals out loud and hold yourself accountable as well. Another thing I really teach my clients is that they have to focus on what they can control. There's a lot of things that are out of your control, but if you're focusing on what you can control, then you're gonna feel so much more empowered because I want you to remember this line, all frustration is met from unmet expectations. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time because it's really important. All frustration is from unmet expectations. So if your expectations are unrealistic or they don't match your effort, you will feel less motivated to keep going. You won't always have control over what the scale says. You cannot always determine how fast you lose weight or even where you lose weight. So I teach my clients, you have to focus on what you can control. So you can control your daily mental wins. You can control your macros and your nutrition. You can control how many workouts you accomplish. And if you measure your success by the things that you can control, then it puts all the power back on you. And instead of feeling helpless, you feel empowered. Since you stuck with me till the end, I'm going to share an experience of a time where being very selective about the people I follow and the information that I let into my brain, how that really affected me. You really have to be careful about the information and the people that you're letting into your subconscious mind because it is very influential. When I was a new mom, I was still trying to survive. I was trying to get my body back. I was trying to feel like myself. And I was following all of these fitness influencers that were ripped and these fitness competitors. And every time I saw that pop up on my screen, I would feel bad about myself. And it just didn't make me feel good. And then I'd be like, even all the progress I did make, I would discredit it and be like, oh, well, I still don't look like them. And it was very unhealthy for my mentality. So what I decided to do was unfollow or mute or delete every single thing that made me feel bad about myself. And the second I did that, I cannot tell you how much better I felt about my confidence, my body image, my progress. I felt way more motivated. I was really proud of myself. So I want to challenge you to do that. Do an Instagram cleanup, a Netflix cleanup, a podcast cleanup. Only allow things in your brain that is teaching you, motivating you, or making you feel better about yourself. Because if you're trying to stay motivated and you notice that the people you surround yourself with or the people that you're following on Instagram are making you feel worse, you need to clear it out. I want you to remember that comparison is the thief of joy. It will take away all of the things that you're happy about. You cannot constantly be comparing yourself to others on the internet because everyone's at a different stage in life. So I want you to focus on being the best version of yourself and you will feel so much more fulfilled. If you liked this video, I want you to check out my next video, seven signs of an unhealthy gut and seven ways to fix it. I'm Body by Bree. Thank you for joining me to create the healthiest, happiest version of yourself. And I will see you back here next time. Mm -hmm.